Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. And I'm really excited about today's guest, Kivo Aregbi, and he's an artist. He's from based out of Houston, and he's got a really interesting story that he's willing to tell. And I'm happy to welcome him to the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So uh, talk about, you know, one thing is we talk about is this, um, this uh, you know, artistry. So talk about, um, you know, how, you know, you inc- how you came to art and, um, you know, we can go into all the avenues of entrepreneurship from there. That's cool. I, I, I got to be honest with you, man. How I'm. I'm a great artist, right? I consider myself one of the greatest artists. But how I came into art is 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 strange because I always knew how to draw, but I was um when I started tattooing, I was always in the streets and stuff. And I was living that life that raised in the hood and living that street life, and and I would always go get tattoos, right? And the the tattoo artist, he was like, yo. You, you're really good at drawing. You should tattoo, right? So what happened is that was my segue into the world of tattooing, but not the world of art, in my opinion, because I was al- already this very, very creative person. I just had no idea the, the artist I would become. And this is why I'm so pro-education. It's because my education changed my life dramatically. So... To be clear, what happened was once I started tattooing, I realized like, oh, I suck. So I was like, I need to learn how to paint. You know, maybe that might help. Just the thought. You know, I was wrong, but it was my thought. My intentions were clear. So I go to this art school to learn how to paint. And they go, well, you can't just come in and learn how to paint. You have to do this, this, this. You got to learn composition. You got to learn drawing. You got to learn this. And I'm like, oh, man, just to take a painting class. So I start that up. And the dean, I, I saw him recently. Um, I told him about this. I need to. I told him I was just talking about him. He was like, "Yo, you're you're pretty articulate in what you're doing. You 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 pretty much have a good understanding of art. I don't know if you should go to art school. I think you should go to actual college. You should maybe try the University of Houston out. So I had to go to the University of Houston, and I was not prepared. I was not ready. From algebra to history to English, I was not ready to go back to, to go even be in school. You know, I had just came from a street life to tattooing. And I ended up going, man, taking his advice. And that's what that is what really transformed me into the artist. I, well, helped streamline me into the artist I am today. Yeah. Yeah, quite interesting. And you actually hold a um you actually hold a uh M- MFA, um, yes. and so, yeah. and basically ranges from painting to theater production, and um, yeah, this is quite interesting. What uh, as a creative, how do you how do how do how do you define the boundaries of creative entrepreneurship? Well, as a creative and creative entrepreneurship are two different things because as a creative, I don't have <clears throat> any blocks because I'm full time artist. But as an entrepreneur, I have to monetize my art. So the thing about it is art is not very, um, it's not a very, it's not a very lucrative field in terms of money unless you're like, you found your way in. So for example, in painting, I, I have made my money selling prints, whereas there are people who do paintings for millions of dollars. In my paintings, I have merchandised my paintings to where I can put my paintings on a shirt, on a coffee mug, on I have all these different things I can put them on, and that's how I make the money off of my paintings. With my theater, it's more about, okay, how can I put on a spectacle, you know? So being a creative and being an entrepreneur is two different fields, <laughs> but but you have to find a way to, to make them turn around and look at each other. Yeah. And uh, it's quite interesting because um, one thing that I really, as creatives, because we draw upon different influences from our culture, our backgrounds, you know, what resonates with us, what we're trying to, what message we're trying to portray, you know, that's what art is, you know, that's what draws people. And, um, you know, some people can look at a, 
you know, artist and not really resonate, but then others can look at it and just, that's what I love about art. And so um, the other thing is, uh, one thing is uh, talking about this, because you talked about going to school, right? And then uh, you just basically, it's like a musician, like a kind of like a freelance musician, you know, someone who has like talent, they just want to play. And then, um, and then this, this dichotomy between formal training and basically, you know, crafting your art. So kind of describe this, this dichotomy between those two. So the, of, of, of training and doing? Yeah. So, so for, for example, for example, one time I was in New Orleans and there's this, uh, there's this uh, little kid, he's like seven, eight years old. He's got this beat up old trumpet that, you know, yeah. probably hand me down and yeah. he's playing the most wonderful jazz ever. Just like beautiful. It's like, it's like, you know, and um, so I talked to him, I'm like, Hey, where did you learn how to play the jazz? You know, you know, uh, you know, did you go to Tulane or whatever? And he's like, he's like, he's like, no, I feel it. I feel it. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So same thing with you. You, you like, you just wanted to draw, but then they're t- telling you to take all these classes. Yeah. So kind of okay. Okay. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So now that is what we call an artist, right? So some people are born an artist, right? I'm, I'm born an artist. I'm, I have whatever, people believe in out there. I have the God-given ability to make art, right? Now, what training does is it compiles all of the history we have on it, and it defines it. So, I have a raw talent. I can just go somewhere and express myself. I can do me. But what training does is it takes you to another level. Because I can't feel it. I can, I can get in there and I can vibe. But the training turns you into Oh, it, and this is why art is so diverse, because the diversity makes you better. This is why diversity is important on all factors, because it makes everything better. Would you rather have that raw talent or would you rather have the knowledge of Michelangelo, Leonardo, Da Vinci, Picasso, Van Gogh? We, we know, just know, understand things how they saw it. And then apply that to what you do. And this is what, what, what typically happens. What typically happens is the training helps you find yourself. You're a better version of you. That raw you is fine. But even Picasso had to go learn about the people before him. You know, and that's what that does. So that's a great question, man. Yeah. It, it's always this dichotomy because, you know, for example, I'll just give you, for example, in entrepreneurship, you know, there's, there's Zuckerberg, there's Gates, um, you know, there's Jobs, you know, they basically, I'm sure they could have finished, but they, you know, went out and created these amazing companies and like, and then you hear like, um, you know, if you go to the MFA Houston here and you just look at the impressionists and a lot of them they didn't have formal training, but they self-taught and they, um, mm-hmm. and then, but then the thing is you, you have these people that are from the top schools, but they, they don't have that, they don't have that raw talent. They may be able to, you know, understand it, but um, they, they, there's no, um, there's, there's this, always this dichotomy between, you know, um, what you learn in books versus real, like application. Um, which yeah, is always- it is. It's a huge difference. It's a huge difference too. And, and I don't have a preference for either, but I, but the, the training does make you better in my opinion, subjectively better. Um, I don't want to say objectively, but it makes because you look at a like I use musicians, for example, um, musicians growth usually happens as they other than experience, but as they sample or as they can draw back to what was older. And uh, this is probably the best example I have. It's Prince. Prince was so talented that some people just hear his name and don't realize. They just think uh, they just think about the products, the songs. They don't realize he could play every instrument. You know, that's a that's a lot of training. You know what I mean? He's not just going out there and freestyling. You know, just making stuff up. He has a lot of training, and it just makes you a better version of yourself. That's the best example that I have on that. Yeah, yeah. Training can 
either help you if you have the right coaches and the right teachers or it can sometimes you sometimes the best artists they they can't they can't exist within the system because it's just so constricting so they need to go out and find themselves it's always like i said it's i love talking about this these two like you know these these uh contrasting points mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, how really interesting. How I know you're on Instagram, um, YouTube, and Twitter. You've got quite a following. How can people contact you, check out your work, um, and uh, you know, see what you're about? Well, my Instagram is uh, Kevo Arts. It's actually the name of my nonprofit as well, and my website is artbykevo.com. Um, what I'm working on right now, the, the biggest thing that I'm working on is my stage play about Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. And uh, that's also on my website, artbykevo.com. So yeah. honestly, I'm not I'm not hard to find in Houston <laughs> because I have a tattoo studio uh, <laughs> called Kevo's Tattoos. But as of now, man, Vincent is like, that's the big deal. That's the that's the really, really, really big thing. That's the thing everybody's trying to come to. Everybody wants to see. I was at the museum, man. I have so many, especially older people, wanting to, I can't wait till Vincent comes out. They, they're ready for Vincent, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really interesting. Um, and uh, for all the audience out there, um, this is, um, you know, when you talk about art, it's very ethereal and subjective, and it's really interesting and great to get Kivo's um uh, insights, you know, all of his resources will be in links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. No, no problem, man. Have a great one.